Hand loaders, bullet casters, welcome back to my bench. Welcome back to this discussion about setting up your bench and what may work for you, what might not. Now, I am going to hash out pretty much what I've done, what works for me, but understand too that all our situations are a little bit different. And my bench here is not just for hand loading purposes. It's also where I'm going to do some gun cleaning and some gunsmithing, that sort of thing. I might up, even end up needing to put a vacuum cleaner on here for some minor repairs and every now and again. Maybe that's what your bench is going to be like as well. So as you can see, I've got three presses mounted over here. I've got a progressive, I've got a single stage, and a little Lyman lube sizer, an old 45 model. I got plenty of decent real estate right there in the middle where you see that M1911, and then here to the right, of course, there's the famous big mean orange vice I've talked about so much with my little CZ bull action rifle kind of mounted in there because that's what I might do to clean it up every now and again. So the space that I have right here in the middle is very valuable to me is what allows this bench to not just be a hand loading bench, but an all around gun bench. One thing you may notice here is this little single stage press is it's mounted pretty far over to this corner. Really, I've got it mounted far enough that you know, the handle ball is almost level or even with this edge of the table. The only thing that needs to occur on this side of the press is just simply this handle movement. So I'm not going to be needing to store items in this area or anything of that sort. So I went ahead and I moved about as far over as I felt comfortable um, and a reason for that is if you notice, when I bring this camera down here, you will see that there is a table leg right here. And if you recall from my last video, one thing I discussed was, you know, I'm kind of particular about things being set up in a solid fashion. So one thing to keep in mind is the closer your presses are to a corner, to a table leg, you know, right underneath this 45 degree support. Uh, this is about the most solid spot on the bench for a press. Now, coming over here, it also looks like maybe I'm kind of lacking a little bit of room. I've got this little uh, tray right here, this loading block, and it, you know, it's a perfect fit between the two. Now, I've got this press mounted with uh, something called T-nuts, which makes it very easy to remove it and set it aside anytime I want to. I'm going to explain the T-nuts a little bit more because I'm a big fan of using them on the presses uh, because if they do need to come off, then that makes life a little bit easier. So moving over here to this Dillon press, I've kind of used the same logic. I've kept it close to the corner. It's in a very solid portion of the table. It's resting right above this 45 degree support that's coming from this table leg here. So again, it's a spot that I feel is rock solid. Now, how much room do we actually need on the left side of this press? I can't remember 100% sure, but I think Dylan actually recommends that you have at least a foot. Personally, I think that's overkill because the only thing that you really need for this press on the left side is a tray for your bullets. And this allows me to keep this press on top of a nice solid section of the table and it frees up a lot of room over in this direction. Now this center section of the table, this is where other portions of life happen. This might be where you decide you're going to take a little time to fit a beaver tail grip safety on one of your 1911s or some other type of smithing work. You might also use this set section here as a desk to basically hash out what loads you're going to work up next. Now the dimensions of this tabletop is uh, five feet wide by three foot deep. 
That might not sound like a whole lot, but I tell you what, I worked in a gunsmith shop as sort of an apprentice kind of type of armorer for a good little while, and this is far more room than I ever had to disassemble a rifle. So believe me, this is more than enough for the vast majority of your needs as far as the flexibility of how large of a table for you know a multi-function table your gunsmithing your gun cleaning your hand loading your your research and so forth so this is a view of the underside of my lyman single stage press <laughs> and i tell you what one thing that you want to keep in mind is where did the manufacturer of the press drill the holes so that you can mount it to your table? And another thing to keep in mind is they are not standardized, folks. So I've got two hand-loading presses, and they both have extremely different mounting requirements as for how they'll fit on an overhang of a table or not at all. These are the T-nuts that I was referencing. If you're not familiar with them, basically what they are are nuts for the bolts that ultimately spike into the table. And they stay as a permanent fixture. You can epoxy them if you're concerned they'll come out, but I have not had an issue with it. And so if you can see right here with this simple overhang, which is a pretty standard overhang, not even quite two inches, um, I had to carve out a section of the framing on this table in order to get these little T-nuts in there so that I can mount this press in a respectable fashion. Now over here on my Dylan, it looks like Dylan actually gave some thought to the overhang of a reloading bench because as you can see here, Dylan gave plenty of room to have this out and bolted down to a pretty standard overhang that's a little bit less than two inches. I don't know, maybe it's an inch and a half. Shoot, if it's helpful to you, we'll go ahead and measure it out because maybe this is one of the presses you're going to use. So what I have here looks like it is just barely over an inch and a quarter. Huh, maybe that's useful information for you. So, <laughs> Your Lyman press over here that I showed you a second ago, I tell you what, I think that was just an afterthought. I like the press. They made the press, and then somebody said, oh, hey, we forgot to put the holes in it. So somebody went over there, drilled some holes real quick. This Dillon was thought out a whole lot better. So if you have some existing presses that you're going to build a table to mount them onto, take note of the overhang and consider, you know, the amount of overhang and the size of the framing that goes around the table and that sort of thing that'll help you out a lot. Now there is another benefit to these T-nuts here. So one thing that I do like quite a bit about these T-nuts is you know sure I still gotta unbolt them and you might be thinking to yourself, you know, hey, Led Smith, there are some better kits out there, like inline fabrication and all of them have those rails. You're right. Those are pretty good kits, and they're pretty attractive as far as what you can do with them. Uh, but to be honest with you, I really just didn't want to have all that kind of hardware bolted to my table. So the benefit to these T-nuts is I can easily just remove these bolts, and I don't have a bunch of nuts and washers on the bottom that are constantly falling and I'm trying to look for them and I got to replace them because they just seem to disappear. So the press will just come off pretty easily. This is not a reloading press. It's just uh, for lubricating bullets and sizing them. You might not like the holes that are left afterward. I don't. So that's why I have this little mat and it's nice to have an additional mat just for little gun cleaning projects and that sort of thing. So I've got even more room now to work with, you know, if I'm loading rifle rounds on my single stage or whatever, I've got plenty of room that makes things real comfortable. But also on the same token there, having those holes also allows me to mount my little trimmer right here, which I do use 
from time to time. Now you might also mount a bench mounted primer system. <laughs> I know RCBS sells one that a lot of people really like. Uh, so having a little platform like this where you can have a trimmer or have the little priming uh, bench priming device or whatever it is you want. This can make things real useful, but to tell you the truth, a lot of times I really don't want anything mounted up here. That's about the only thing that I will consider temporary. I like to keep my presses permanent if possible. So having a good powder measure uh, set up is also pretty important you sometimes i tell you what i have had the hardest time finding a permanent spot that i'm comfortable with keeping a powder measure so that's why i have it in that sort of fashion where it can be easily moved around you know a scale is an extremely valuable tool along with the powder trickler and you need a scale mounted somewhere where it's not going to be easily interfered with and what i have done with this scale is I set it up by my eye level so that I do not have to tippy toe, I do not have to crouch down to read the numbers. So a nice little wall shelf or something like that where it's out of the way of all the action that takes place on the table is going to be a great benefit to you. So folks, I hope this has been helpful, just my experiences, of what's worked for me, what hasn't. So I would love to hear about what's worked for you. Go ahead, throw some comments down there, but please also hit that like button and subscribe because I got a lot of great stuff coming around the corner for you. Thank you. God bless you.